to start, you know, shot in the arm, tackles, vaccine, hesitancy, and misinformation through the merger of storytelling and science. How did this partnership initially come about? Uh, I got lucky enough to find Neil on my previous film, Food Evolution, which was a reset of the conversation around GMOs. <clears throat> There's a lot of overlap between anti-GMO disinformation and anti-vaccine disinformation. Um, and uh, he did a brilliant job uh, narr narrating that under my brilliant direction, of course. Joke, everybody. Um, he did a brilliant job narrating that and we... And and partnering on getting that film out, out into the world. And then when I was working on this, which really I called Food Evolution Boot Camp for, for Shot in the Arm, there was so much overlap, but this was much harder and much more complicated, co complicated and much more contentious. Um, I sent a rough cut to uh, to Neil to get his input on and ask him if he would uh, consider coming back on board. And he said, no, this movie is terrible. <laughs> into that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, he came, he gave uh, excellent notes to help me tighten it up and get the science right and places that we might need a graph and things like that. And then I begged him to also come on board as executive producer to further this mission, mission which included him doing wonderful uh, press like this. So um, yeah, why'd you come on board, Neil? Yeah, I'm. I, I regret it every day. <laughs> <laughs> like what did i agree to um no so so i'm you know when artists call the creative types call and they need some of what i have expertise in um, I, i'm kind of there for you when that happens mm -hmm. and in this case um scott wanted some some guidance on not his storytelling because he's very excellent at that uh it's how to make sure the science is carried in that storytelling without compromising its integrity, where you're putting in the supportive information you net you would need to make this point relative to that point. Yeah. Did you represent your adversary accurately? Or did you might you have had some bias there where so I got him saying this, so there it is. No, but he said something else a little later. Um, I know this from press accounts. So so there's that. That's where I came into this equation. But it's it's Scott's brainchild, right? That this this should even be a project in the first place. It's so gripping to watch. And, you know, there, there seems to be this reluctancy in media and from the public to acknowledge the nuances of science and that it's ever evolving. Why do you think this is the perfect medium to prevent to present this information and then start these conversations? Great question. Yeah, it's uh, the 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 power of storytelling. It's I'm such I'm, I'm so honored that I've been able to make a career out of it. It's um, it's been our greatest tool as as humans to be able to convince each other of how to go down the road. Obviously, it can be manipulated like propaganda, but in its best form, when it's used for good, when the superpowers are used for good, it's it 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 moves people and engages with people and earns people's trust. And surprises them, and makes them laugh, and it makes makes them cry, and makes them think in a way that uh, you know a, a meme or a gif or a, even a, a, mm -hmm. a short a news piece can't 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 do the same thing. One of the greatest compliments we had for the film is um, from a wonderful communicator and scientist, Kathleen Hall Jameson, who said that this film does more for fighting disinformation than we've tried to do in twenty years of papers. And she respects those papers. She knows what those papers are for, but it was really humbling. I mean, research papers research on papers. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and it was, mm -hmm. and it was just such a um, obviously great, a great honor. Um, and that th th these are complementary. Let's have both. Let's have the research papers, and let's have um, science, and let's have Helen Alda support scientists trying to get them to become better communicators, and all all of the above. So um, a, we hope we've seen the film uh, has been an amazing tool to help people remember yeah. the importance of, of science and um, fighting disinformation, um, but also supporting things like humility and supporting our social contract and defending democracy as well. And um, it's it's been a great honor to see it have that effect. By the way, a point about defending democracy, yeah. it's not so much that we're defending democracy, we, we are declaring in implicitly and a little bit explicitly, mm -hmm. And Paul Offit, I think, says it bl bluntly. When there is no understanding of truth, you cannot have an informed democracy. Democracy just simply doesn't work. 
right. because we're all collectively voting on some outcome. And if nobody has an understanding of what is objectively true, then your votes just dissipate into nothingness because you're not connected to objective reality. And the same thing, if you don't have a, a grounding in just common decency mm. and love of humanity and love beyond the end of your nose, you also are not going to have a, a functioning democracy. You touched upon this already, but you know, you were there to guide script points and make sure that the information was conveyed in the most compelling way. What was that collaboration process like working with Scott and the medical experts and accomplishing just that? Yeah, I would say he agrees with maybe two thirds of what I tell him. Um, <laughs> Half of what remains, we fight about it. Then I twist his arm and he, he succumbs. And he's larger than me. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a remaining little bit where I say, okay, he's the filmmaker, he's the director, he has a vision. And I'm just coming in in my little pieces here. So I don't have the I don't have the the life experience to judge to 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 second guess what his decisions are in that sort of piece of it but the rest of it i know my place in this i'm not telling him about camera moves i'm not telling him about lighting i'm not no i know where i belong and i belong commenting on how the science is moving through the film and do you need a graph to help out this comment do you need um do we need more from this person because it's this dangling uh, content there <clears throat> is there um, so there are a few places where Scott added content back to that might have been on a cutting room floor otherwise mm -hmm. that would flesh out a bit of science that I felt needed that. Otherwise, the viewer just simply has to take a person's word for it. And yeah. I didn't want it to be just that. Yeah. You, you both definitely accomplished that. And Scott, you know, documentary filmmaking is such an underappreciated art form. And while this is classified as a documentary, it very much feels like a political thriller. And it's approached with so much empathy. Was that something that you were mindful of as you were creating this project? How were you able to tell that line so effortlessly? I was trying to figure movie? out why it didn't feel like a documentary. And you just said it. Thank you. It doesn't feel, documentaries feel like an obligation. Right? Mm, yeah. You know? <laughs> and this... It's it's not an obligation. It's a we're we're being emotionally carried by it. Yeah, and maybe there's no word for that. But what did you call it? A, a, a political thriller. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, th thank you both. It, it, it was through it was through hard work and determination. Early on, uh, the the there was a time that we were actually uh, looking at uh, detective films, right, uh, or or even a <laughs> a, a, a murder mystery. Right, that this is the a reverse murder mystery of like who is the murder? The, the virus is the murder, but also the dis the disinformation mm. uh, uh, artists are are are, are the murderers. Um, but no, we worked very very hard. Films even like Traffic, you know, a layered film like like Traffic was was an inspiration. Um, brilliant Steven Soderbergh film. Um, so we do our best within the documentary um, genre to try and make it feel like any other movie. It's all storytelling. We're just using a, a variety of vo vo vocabulary that narrative filmmakers now use too, if, if it's an interview or handheld uh, camera work or whatever it is. But yeah, we, you work really, really hard to try and keep people engaged and still tell the truth and not cheat on them. Yeah, there's so much information and education that audiences are going to be able to take away after seeing this documentary. Did anything surprise either of you during this process? Yeah, the biggest surprises were probably just how how ruthless some people can be. I'll give you a negative surprise and a positive surprise. Negative surprise was how ruthless people can be. So Del Bigtree, one of the biggest anti-vax communicators, in 2019, I'm interviewing him and he's take, trying to say that you know measles are really not dangerous or they say measles is dangerous but drinking water can be dangerous just like a terrible comparison and he finishes by saying if ebola is sweeping the country talk to me then right like if a real risk like this isn't the real risk if the real risk comes and we cut to covid and he doesn't change his mind he just makes it worse and he doubles down he triples down and it's just it's just awful all the way to him being at a at a, a rally at the same time on january 6th 
and just spewing cynicism saying, I wish I could tell you that COVID was real. I wish I could tell you that Tony Fauci should be trusted. I wish I could tell you that voting machines work, just throws that in there. And I wish you, I could tell you that people cared, which is like such a great closing line. It's just like the ultimate cynicism, but just listen to mm. me. And so that breaks my heart that people can be that ruthless. I wish that his body would seize like a, like an engine, right? That's been over, uh, that's been abused and just stop working that he just can't spew anymore. Bull crap, but that's huh. extreme. Uh, so, but then on the positive side of surprise, the positive side of the surprise is that in a, in a heartbreaking situation like Samoa, where two parents yeah. lost their babies, two babies were died from a mistake around the MMR vaccine, just a muscle relaxant was mixed in, yeah. the babies died. Nothing to do with the validity of the MMR vaccine. And I'll jump to the end of it and horrible influence of people like Robert Kennedy Jr. on making that situation work. But you go to the end of it, and now there's a measles outbreak in Samoa because they've stopped taking vaccines. And these parents that lost their babies to this mistake who could become so cynical and so want revenge on the medical institution, go on the news, it gets me freaking choked up. Go on the news and say, please don't make our tragedy your tragedy, make it worse. Yeah. Please go get vaccinated. That is a beautiful surprise of what we can be as human beings. We can be that humble, we can be that generous, we can be that um, uh, dedicated to trying following the best information not just what our passions want us to follow. I would say surprise in a good way was, and this is in part credit to Scott for picking the right people, but I think I want to believe, and I think it's true that the, the, the temperament of the people Scott selected for this, for this uh, documentary uh, is not uncommon mm -hmm. among healthcare professionals. And that, how is it you can get two or three doctors as well as uh, three nurses or so, is that the, what the total is, what, um, who come across with such humility, such mm -hmm. compassion, mm -hmm. such, because they could be angry with the anti-vaxxers. You know, they could be like, like name calling angry on mm -hmm. that level, mm -hmm. but instead they they feel for the people who were drawn in by the anti-vaxxers mm -hmm. and I, so i was surprised delightfully surprised how consistent that emotional state of of the emotional response to this tragedy yeah. had become among all of the the, the target interviewers so that, that's a testament to scott's you know i mean he he picked him uh, he knew Scott. Didn't you find someone at at after an article in the New Yorker magazine? Yeah, it was Blamo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So a good documentarian is finding people who can give the right messages in the right way, so that you can influence the audience, I emotionally, so. intellectually, and even emotionally. So that yeah. surprised me because I've met doctors who were basically assholes. <laughs> you know, I've met nurses who are who are ready to give up, or you're just another patient in my day. Of mm. 35 patients and i don't i don't have sensitivity to you you know uh so in this oh, case I, I would want all of them to be my nurses and my doctors and you're pointing out uh you're pointing out something that it came to me and it, it plays it plays visually in the film uh that just naturally through the people that are telling the truth and are are also humble you believe them with them you look in their eyes and you want to be engaged by them you see that they're not trying to be perfect. They're trying to express yeah. the best thing. And then you- And they're not them. trying to sell you anything. They're not, right. right. You look at Dell Biggs, you look at their eyes because we did direct address uh, interviews like this. You look at Robert Kennedy Jr.'s eyes, Dell Bigtree's eyes, Andrew Wakefield's eyes, and you can see the the smarm and, and them dancing around the fact of how hard it is to try and tell the, the, the to continue with their, dare I say, lies, their fomenting of disinformation. It's much harder. It's easier to tell the truth. Last question for the both of you. I think this film is such a celebration of the, the medical experts that you featured throughout this film. But you know, also one of the goals was to replace cynicism with healthy curiosity. As you've brought this film around the festival circuit, what has it meant to both of you as filmmakers to see that you've created that impact firsthand? Um, it's been, it has been wonderful to see people experience this film in a hopeful way because there's a lot of cynicism in it there's a lot of disinformation in it 
There's a lot of there's a lot of uh, of downright lies in, in the in the film, but at the end of the day, science makes our lives better. And the yeah. people that follow science and have the humility to use the scientific method, which is checking themselves and checking these institutions in the same way that hopefully we as as journalists and storytellers use systems to check ourselves, that that they can not come out of this film cynical because we're living living at a time where cynic, some people get confused and wonder if cynic, cynical and skeptical are the same thing, and they're not. Skeptical is, is beautiful. It's the foundation of science, obviously. It's the foundation of our instincts as human beings to be skeptical and wonder, should I eat that plant? Should I have trust in that friendship? Should I listen to that person? And and cyn cynical is, 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 a, is a bit of a poison. A little bit more than a bit of a poison. It is a poison. And cynical comes about when you are presented with information that could lower your skepticism. It's like the COVID, you're skeptical if the COVID vaccine is going to be safe, or is it worth the risk? Is it and you're presented with overwhelming evidence that it is far safer to take it than to not take it, not just for yourself, but other people that you could pass COVID on to. But you don't want to believe that. You're not skeptical anymore. You're cynical. And I've come to say that. A lot of these people fomenting disinformation aren't just aren't just um, corrupt. They're corrosive, and they're corrosive to these systems. And it's I've been I've been very grateful that the film goes the opposite direction on that, and reinstates the reasons you should have trust in verifiable truth, in decency, in our social contract. So it's been it's been a great honor to see that effect. I'm new to film festivals, um, but I was delighted to watch the reaction in the crowd, uh, in the audience, to scenes where I had the same reaction, right? Mm, so yeah. it wasn't just because I was close to the project and felt it more because of that fact. It was that the film was actually being effective in all the ways intended at the right time and in the right way.